Hey everyone, welcome back to Text Connect. Now in the wet processing line, after the desizing of the fabric, it undergoes scouring. In this video, we will try to understand the need for scouring and then how the process is carried out. So before we begin with our video, let me tell you something about An Academy, one of the largest online education platform and its amazing courses for GATE and ESE. Today is the last day of the special prize week and the prizes rise from the 1st of April. Go and grab their courses now. Use our code TCGATE10 to avail a special discount of 10%. They also provide notes for GATE and ESE and along with it they have just begun with a batch for GATE 2023 called Evolve from March 30th. A special batch for droppers called Resilience has also started from March 30th with some of the best coaches. So hurry up use our code TCGATE10 and start with your preparation straight away. The link to the course is also given in the description below. So after desizing the fabric is free from size. But it still contains some fats, oils, waxes and other natural impurities. These impurities are hydrophobic in nature that is they repel water. Now this will affect the absorbency of the fabric when it moves for further processes like dyeing printing and finishing as the dyes and chemicals would not bind with the fiber structure uniformly so the removal of these hydrophobic impurities is necessary the scouring is performed to remove these hydrophobic impurities from the desized fabric the oils and waxes are the outermost cuticle layer of the cotton fabric Now we know the need for scouring. Number 1, the fabric has improved and uniform absorbency. And number 2, to make it ready for the next process that is bleaching, dyeing, printing and finishing. Now let us discuss the reactions that take place during scouring. The saponifiable oils and free fatty acid undergoes saponification and gets converted into soap and glycerol. The non-saponifiable oils and waxes undergo emulsification and then can be easily removed. Proteins are converted into soluble amino acids, pectins into pectic and metapectic acid. All type of mineral matters get dissolved into the mixture and the dust and dirt particles they are removed by detergents. So basically all type of impurities they are made water soluble so that they can be washed easily next let us have a look at the chemicals that are used for scouring so the scouring mixture involves an alkali like NaOH which is used for saponification now the addition of alkali at high temperatures is not sufficient for the reactions to take place because the surface tension of water is very high So a wetting agent is also added to reduce the surface tension of water. Sodium silicate or carbonate. Now this is added to hydrolyze the pectins. It also acts as a stabilizer and maintains the pH of the mixture. Soap is added to the mixture which acts as the emulsifier and suspends dust. Now let us move on and have a look at the different type of machines in which the scouring process is carried out. The most common one is skewer and hence scouring is also known as skewering. So this is a skewer vessel. The fabric is piled up in rope form and then hot alkaline scouring liquor is sprinkled from the top and circulated throughout the fabric. Now spraying of the solution ensures the uniform distribution of the liquor onto the fabric. The temperature is maintained at around 130 degrees Celsius. pressure 1.8 kg per cm square for 8 to 10 hours the material to liquor ratio is kept between 1 is to 4 and 1 is to 5 there is a safety valve which releases extra pressure in the form of steam the excess liquor is drained through the perforated bottom and then the fabric is washed at least two times before unloading so the fabric is loaded with heavy stones on top and there is a jute or cotton fabric between the fabric and the stones The skewer is not loaded at more than 80% of its capacity or else there are chances of fabric entanglement and it might also result in improper circulation of the liquor. 
Now let us move on to the next machine which is the J box. So it is J in J shape and hence the name J box. Now before the fabric enters the J box it is treated with the alkali solution. It is passed in the rope form and piled up in the J box. It is treated with steam for about 60 to 90 minutes and here the concentration of alkali is high like around 4 to 5 percent as the scouring time is low. Now another process is open width or pad roll system. So here the fabric passes in full width and hence it will prevent any rope markings on the fabric. So the fabric is passed through saturators and is impregnated with the scouring liquid. As the fabric exits from these saturators, it passes through the padding mangle, which ensures good pickup and penetration of the solution into the fabric. The fabric is then heated in a preheater and batched inside a movable chamber. This batch is then moved to a steam line where it is steamed at 95 degrees Celsius for about 4 to 6 hours. The fabric is gently rotating to ensure uniform scouring treatment. Finally, it is then taken to the continuous washing range where two hot and two cold washes are given. Finally, the fabric is scoured. Now this is known as a semi-continuous scouring process. So after scouring, our major objective of removing the impurities and improving the fabric absorbency is achieved. So next in line comes the bleaching process which we will cover in another video. Now until then if you have any doubts then feel free to drop us an email. Let us know your feedback in the comments and do share this video with all your textile friends. We will be back with another video soon. Until then, keep learning and stay connected with Text Connect, a learning center for textile.